the art game. Jeff, my friend, Andy Tucker says one day, we aren't making any money, let's try a new game. Well, Andy, Jeff says, tell me your plan. But remember this, I don't want to take money from people. We aren't going to take money from them. They're going to buy things from us. And he says, But that's our old game. What's new? Jeff asks. We're playing a child's game here. People buy our things for one dollar. Let's move to Pittsburgh. We can find some millionaires and make a lot of money. And he says, why do you want to go to Pittsburgh? Jeff asks. The millionaires in Pittsburgh worked for their money. It's new to them. Now they want to buy beautiful, expensive things. And he says, But what are they going to buy from us? Jeff asks. Wait and see, and he says. After three days in the bars and restaurants of Pittsburgh, Jeff and Andy meet at their hotel on Thursday evening. Let's have a drink, Jeff, and he says. I know a Pittsburgh millionaire. Where did you meet him? Jeff asks at a little coffee bar on 12th Street. Pittsburgh millionaires don't like expensive restaurants and bars. We talked and he liked me. His name is Scudder. I went to his house too. He has 12 million dollars in the bank, but he's a new millionaire. Now he wants to know about good books, the theater, and beautiful art. He wants to be a gentleman, and he says. How is he going to do that? Jeff says. He has teachers, and he buys expensive books and pictures, and he says. Okay, but what's he going to buy from us? Jeff asks. He has a lot of pictures in his house. He has a famous little gold horse, too. It's from Egypt. It's from Egypt, and it's very old. I asked him about it. He said, there are two of these gold horses. I want the other horse, but I can't find it. We don't know about art. Where can we find a gold horse for Scudder? Jeff asks. Wait and see, my friend, Andy says. On Friday, Andy comes back to the hotel in the afternoon. He has a bag in his hand. Look, Jeff. I was in a little store near here. Look at this. Andy says. He opens the bag. Andy, Jeff says. Is this a gold horse from Egypt? It is. It was under some old things in the back of the store. I said to the old man, Can I have that horse for two dollars? He said, that's a beautiful little thing. Give me thirty-five dollars, and it's yours. What did you give him? Jeff asks. He was happy with twenty-five dollars, and Scudder is going to be very happy. He's going to buy my little horse from you. Why from me? Jeff asks. You're going to call him. You're a famous art teacher. You want to buy his horse, and he said. 
After Jeff's telephone call, Mr. Scudder arrives at the hotel. He wants to see the art teacher's gold horse. It's beautiful, Mr. Scudder says. It's the other horse from Egypt. Yes, yes, I know about your horse. Now I want to buy it. I want to put the two horses in a special place at my art school. I can give you two thousand dollars for your horse, the art teacher says. Never! You can't buy my horse. I'm going to buy yours. Here is two thousand five hundred dollars. Mr. Scudder says. Okay, with $2,500 I can buy two or three pictures for my school, the art teacher says. Now I'm going to have two horses in my bedroom, Mr. Scudder says. Jeff runs to Andy's room. Andy is looking at his watch. Did Scudder buy the horse, he asks. Yes, he loved it. The money is in my bag, Jeff says. Good, good, let's go. There is a train to, con to Cincinnati at 10.45, Andy says. Why? Let's stay in Pittsburgh for the weekend. Mr. Scudder is happy and we're happy. He has two horses and we have two thousand five hundred dollars. No problems, Jeff says. You're right and wrong. We have two thousand five hundred dollars, but Skada has only one horse, Andy says. Andy, did you take that horse from his house? Jeff asks. Yes, it wasn't difficult, Andy says. But why did you tell me? that story about the old man and the store near here? Jeff asks. Oh, because you never want to take money from people. Mr. Scudder had a horse for his money, and he says. But, Jeff, stop. No questions. Let's go. The train is waiting, and he says. Thanks for watching. I hope that you liked this story. Talking is not practicing. Talking is not practicing. What does this mean? It means if you want to improve your Spanish, it will not help you to speak Spanish out loud in the car as you drive to work in the morning. It will not help you to go to the bathroom, close the door, and speak Spanish to the mirror. I used to think those things help. Now I think they don't.